Earth has changed and transformed countless times since its formation. The mystery of how life emerged from non-life remains a significant scientific puzzle, but we have a prevailing theory that suggests it happened around 3.8 billion years ago. Before we explore that, let's go back in time. If we zoom out on the vast cosmic timeline, we realize that Earth looked drastically different in the distant past. Let's see how the planet might have appeared at various points in time. 4.5 billion years ago, 3.5 billion years ago, 2 billion years ago, and half a billion years ago. Let's go back 4.5 billion years ago to the Hadean Eon, also known as the Cryptic Era. During this time, Earth was a hot, molten rock. It was a young planet, less than 100 million years old, and its thin atmosphere consisted mostly of hydrogen and helium. Due to the absence of a magnetic field, the solar wind stripped away much of this atmosphere, leaving the planet vulnerable to the sun's cosmic rays. The young Earth experienced frequent asteroid and comet bombardments, a process called accretion which added to its mass. One significant event was the collision of a protoplanet called Theia with Earth, resulting in the formation of our moon. Dust and rocks from this collision formed rings around Earth, similar to Saturn's rings. Some asteroids carried a special compound, water, which played a crucial role in Earth's history. While not all of Earth's water originated from these meteors, scientists believe a significant portion did. Hydrogen ions in the solar wind interacted with the meteors, releasing oxygen atoms and producing water. This frequent meteor impact contributed to the formation of much of the young planet's water. As the planet cooled, heavier elements sank and lighter compounds rose, like water. Volcanic eruptions released gases into the atmosphere, including carbon dioxide and water vapor. Gradually, this water vapor built up and formed Earth's oceans and atmosphere as we know them today. After 3.5 billion years, the Paleo-Archaean era rolled in and made Earth cooler. We went from a hot molten planet to what scientists call the pale orange dot. Our planet got a solid crust and a cool magnetic field keeping a methane-filled atmosphere with a groovy pale orange haze, just like Saturn's moon Titan. Vast oceans of liquid water formed from rainfall, and there was a massive moon that orbited much closer to Earth than it does today, resulting in significantly stronger tidal forces. The Paleoarchaean era was a period of mountain formation and the continued formation of minerals. At this stage, scientists believe that the only life on Earth was bacteria. The orange haze in the atmosphere was caused by photosynthesizing bacteria called cyanobacteria. These bacteria evolved the ability to convert light and water into energy, releasing oxygen in the process. The dissolved oxygen caused iron in the oceans to rust and sink to the sea floor, forming striking red-banded iron formations. However, between 2.4 and 2.1 billion years ago, something remarkable and disastrous occurred during this early stage of life. The waste produced by these evolved photosynthetic cyanobacteria, specifically oxygen, built up in the atmosphere. This buildup of oxygen caused the extinction of anaerobic bacteria, leading to Earth's first mass extinction event, which some refer to as the Great Oxidation Event. This event took place during the Paleoproterozoic Era. As part of this transformation, the planet now possesses a protective ozone layer that shields life from harmful solar radiation. Bacteria play a significant role during this time, creating unique rock structures known as stromatolites. With no competitors, cyanobacteria dominate the Earth. Through photosynthesis, they convert carbon dioxide and water into nutrients releasing oxygen as a byproduct which fills the atmosphere. However, the worst was about to come, around 2.3 billion years ago during the Mesoproterozoic era. The Earth experienced a period of freezing, possibly as a result of the Great Oxidation event and a decrease in volcanic activity. Over time, the ice melted, indirectly releasing more oxygen into the atmosphere. During this era, eukaryotes and blue-green algae emerged. 
It was also the first time that meiosis and sexual reproduction occurred in eukaryotes. After bidding farewell to the Mesoproterozoic era 650 million years ago, Earth welcomed the Neoproterozoic era. Protozoans like Paramecium, Amoebas, and Melanocyrillium evolved during this time. The first animal cells differentiated from plants, and the animal cells began feeding on plants. This was the development of the first herbivores. During this era, the Earth froze over at least three times. Scientists refer to this period of Earth as Snowball Earth, a time when the entire planet was frozen over. According to resources, Earth experienced extreme cold, causing the freezing of all land surfaces and half of the total ocean water. The equatorial regions became as cold as modern-day Antarctica. Underneath the vast glacial ice, a single supercontinent called Pernotia formed, centered around the South Pole. Initially, the Earth was a molten sphere, then transformed into a desolate playground for bacteria. Now, it's become a frozen globe. However, life always manages to find a way to survive. It's believed that fungi, worms, and small bilaterally symmetrical animals also developed during this era. Earth had plenty of time to change, and after 350 million years, Earth underwent incredible transformations during the Paleozoic era. Surprisingly, it wasn't as cold as it used to be. During this era, complex life forms emerged, such as fish, arthropods, mollusks, and echinoderms. It was a time when plants and animals started inhabiting land, and the first air-breathing creatures appeared. In the oceans, sharks, horseshoe crabs, and starfish evolved. The Paleozoic era is divided into several periods. During the early Paleozoic era in the Cambrian period, something incredible happened known as the Cambrian Explosion. This explosion refers to a rapid increase in the diversity of life forms. It was during this period that various marine invertebrates emerged, including trilobites, brachiopods, and early arthropods. As time progressed, life continued to evolve in the oceans, leading to an increase in marine biodiversity. This included the appearance of jawless fish, corals, and primitive mollusks. All right, let's dive into the Devonian period. This was a time when things got really interesting. Insects started popping up. We also had this jawless fish called Cephalaspis hanging out in freshwater spots rocking its bony armor. But wait, there's more. Crabs and ferns became all the rage, spreading like wildfire. And let's not forget about the big guys, massive sharks, hagfish, and ratfish evolved, making quite a splash in the oceans. All right, buckle up, time for the Carboniferous period. During this, Earth's climate was like a permanent tropical paradise with no dramatic season changes. It was like a dream vacation for plants because they covered the entire planet. In fact, they piled up so much that they formed the first ever coal deposits, which we still use today. The extra plant growth led to crazy high oxygen levels in the air, around 35% compared to the 21% we have now. And gigantic creepy crawlies roamed the land and skies. Imagine dragonflies with wingspans as big as your arm's length. Deadly poisonous centipedes slithered around, some as long as two meters. And don't forget the mammoth cockroaches and scorpions the size of your forearm. It was like a real-life monster movie. Meanwhile, amphibians were having a party. They got bigger and more diverse, with some resembling modern-day crocodiles. These animals reached lengths of almost 6 meters. They even developed a thick, scaly skin like modern crocs to avoid drying out when out of the water. But the real game-changer was when amphibians figured out how to lay eggs on land. That meant they didn't have to stay near water all the time. It was a revolution in the animal kingdom. The Carboniferous period set the stage for the next chapter, the Permian period. This period began approximately 300 million years ago, just 50 million years before the dinosaurs. During the Permian period, 
all the continents formed a giant supercontinent called Pangaea. Plants diversified and the first cycads appeared. The first large plant-eating and meat-eating animals, reptile-like creatures called therapsids evolved, characterized by amniotic membranes and earbuds. These creatures might resemble dinosaurs at first glance, but they were actually more closely related to mammals. One notable theramcid was the Demetrodon, about 5 meters long, with a large sail-like structure on its back. Mammals also began to rise in dominance during this period. Giant bear-like creatures called Gorgonospians emerged, and therapsids varied in size and diet, from less than a kilogram to over a ton. Some therapsids, such as cynodonts, showed social behavior and evidence of hunting in packs. In the oceans, fish with bony skeletons thrived, while sharks, rays, sponges, and corals continued to flourish. On land, insects with specialized mouthparts, such as sucking and piercing, developed. Insects like beetles, cockroaches, and cicadas also appeared. However, 250 million years ago, the Permian era was brought to an end by a cataclysmic event causing mass extinction, separating the Paleozoic and Mesozoic eras. Scientists aren't exactly sure what triggered this disaster, but they have some interesting theories. One possibility is that our planet got smacked by a massive asteroid or comet. They think the space rock could have been as wide as 6 to 12 kilometers. The impact would have released energy millions of times greater than the largest earthquake ever recorded. Some evidence suggests that Siberia and China back then experienced colossal volcanic eruptions. These eruptions spewed out tons of dust and ash into the atmosphere, creating massive clouds. The volcanic clouds caused a dramatic drop in temperatures worldwide, like a nuclear winter. Imagine glaciers covering vast areas. With the cold, plants couldn't photosynthesize, leading to a shortage of food. To make matters worse, the oceans were overloaded with carbon dioxide. It was a recipe for disaster, and both land and sea ecosystems collapsed. Whatever the trigger was, Earth wasn't a happy place at the time. The combination of those events led to a massive disaster known as the Great Dying. A mind-boggling 95% of marine species and 70% of land animals got wiped out. It was the most severe mass extinction ever recorded in our planet's history. Want to know what happened after the Great Permian Extinction and how the dinosaurs came to be? Comment below if you're curious. Stay tuned for more updates. Thanks for watching.